Hello and welcome to This Esports Life, a podcast about me, my esports journey, and all of the stuff that you don't get to see uh, between the jump cut YouTubers and the fake Twitch streamers and the private personalities. This is the this podcast is for everybody who wants to get on that journey or just know more about that journey from the outside. And I'm here to 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 log my experiences and tell you about how things are going in my life um, on my committed quest to becoming the best at something in esports. And um, we're bringing this podcast back. We're doing more casual casts. Um, I'm doing more appearances on other shows. And it's all because of something that we're going to talk about later in the podcast. But I started this because I did a show with DDK and it, it went really well. It went so well, in fact, that it made me want to do my own podcast. And there will be a link for that in the YouTube video of this. But I believe that this episode will be on an RSS feed that Nathan set up so that you can get it on um, many different platforms. I don't want to say which ones because we don't know which ones they will get accepted on, but there will be on more. So you can actually listen to it on your phone through our, via an RSS feed, and hopefully it's just any app that you decide to listen to podcasts on. But yeah, um, DDK's podcast with me was about, um, I think it, it, it started out as how do you model Counter-Strike and how do you figure out Counter-Strike from the ground up, and it kind of turned into a dis- uh, more of a disjointed discussion about psychology and we jumped around from topic to topic but it was all pretty interesting and i hope to definitely do a follow-up with him but you guys should go watch that and let me know what you think about that in in the comments here because i don't think there's a way to comment on that podcast episode itself um but now that we're bringing this back i want to number one have this video be no jump cuts so it's gonna be long something you want to maybe put on in the background, tune in whenever you hear something that catches your attention. Um, But I don't want to have, I don't want to have it cut up and split up. I want to, I want you to see every second. And I know that's not the ideal format for good content on YouTube, but I think I could do it my own way. And and I think it'll, I think we can make it work because I I personally like listening and seeing every single moment. You know, I think there's always that criticism of YouTubers that like, they can hide behind the jump cuts and I don't like that. I like to know, I like to see, see people thinking, you know what I mean? I like to see where, how the thoughts are formulated. I like to see it all happen in one, one take as if it were live. So I'll make it a little bit bumpier, a little bit longer, a little bit more rambly, but I think that's how we're going to keep it. Um, this week on, on this, on this esports life trapped in America week 52. 80,000 YouTube subs and two seasons of ECS. Those are our topics for today. So <clears throat> a lot of people that watch the stream have heard about me, have heard it, have heard me talk about my, my situation uh, as a commentator personality, uh, a citizen of Canada. I, I live in LA. I've lived here now for just over a year, hence week 52. And I haven't been able to leave. Um, the reason being was because right after we got laid off from Yahoo, I decided to try to turn my visa into an EB1, which is kind of like a green card and would grant me permanent residence and would allow me to live and work in the U S. And I remember if you guys know, um, a year ago, I talked about the positive and positives and negatives of going to Yahoo versus not going to Yahoo and continuing to stay freelance. And a big thing with that was being able to work on Boxer, being able to work on the YouTube channel, being able to live stream, make content the way I want to and not have a boss. And I still in the ideal world am committed to that goal. So, you know, um, Luke, someone I met at Yahoo, some producer at Yahoo, like lent me some money. I put down a six thousand dollar application for an EB one, and 
we kind of rushed we rushed it because there was not a lot of time left because um it's great here it's great uh in la it's great i like, I like america a lot um as a as a canadian i guess it doesn't feel too far from home uh there is a lot of work here in la i feel like as a as a citizen or a permanent resident i would be making lots of money for america I, I would have a lot of opportunities for myself and there's every reason in the world for me to want to live here if i continue doing what i do uh you know have i've have i've been able to do ecs um two seasons of EP, ecs a season of uh, uh, esl pro league and uh, I've been able to do a GeForce PUBG show that was kind of almost touch and go with Luke because he just had this show. He's like, oh, we're going to do this. Hey, Launders want to come cast PUBG? I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. And that's not, those are the opportunities that I can't really get anywhere else. So it's, it's been good. Even though I've been trapped in America, it's, it's been pretty good. And um, the only thing now is I have to wait to see if I get accepted because there's not a high chance that I get accepted. It's like 40% acceptance rate for the particular visa that I'm applying for. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, just flat out the odds, the odds are not necessarily in my favor, but, but I'm hoping I do. If I don't, um, my other options would be to uh, find a, another employer to sponsor a visa so that I could live here but again, I, I would rather not do that so that I can continue to do things freelance. I'm kind of choosing to make less consistent income and have a mo more volatile life, but I think I would be happier. I think in the future, you know, like to, I'm, so I'm, the point of this podcast is to talk about the current events of my life and then where I'm at and like what I'm thinking, right? And I'm how old am I? Am I 28 yet? No, I'm 27. And uh, my birthday is in July. And um, I think I've matured pretty late in life. Like everything about me has matured later on. I feel like I have a high skill ceiling for maturity, but it's taken a while to get there for everything. You know, um, and a lot of my friends have matured a lot faster than me in in many different ways, but I like to embrace what, whoever I am, you know, so I'm a little bit immature. I embrace that. If I'm not ready to, uh, want to get married, I embrace that. If I'm not ready to want to have a career, I embrace that. If I don't want to, um, if I'm not committed to finishing school or doing anything, I embrace that. I try to run with that and figure out for myself why, and I've always been like that. So I definitely do feel like at my age, you know, a lot of people are a lot farther ahead of me in a lot of ways. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel like that too. And to that, I would say, you know, I personally feel okay because I'm making enough money that I can afford to like kind of do it my own way. You know, I don't have to really, at the end of the day, money is very important when people think about like a lot of their goals and what they're mature about. And if you make money, then you can kind of like solve a lot of problems, like no matter where you are in life. So if you're behind on some skills, like you've never, I saw a wreck, wreckful, wreckful and soda poppin talking about on Twitter, how they've never boiled water before and they're total manlets. And, uh, I actually met wreckful at TwitchCon and he showed me his investment portfolio and I won't get into that, but I will say that he had a very nice investment portfolio for a guy that's never boiled the water. So I think maybe, you know, a lot of us have that in common where it's like, you look like you're mature to somebody else, or you have a certain trait that's ahead and another that's behind and that's fine. And I'm sure he feels okay. And if you, I'm sure he doesn't feel insecure about the fact that he's never boiled water in a pot before because he's making a lot of money, you know? So it's just like, that solves a lot of his problems. So I think that you can, um, you can kind of buy your way into feeling okay about being behind in certain ways. If you do get to a place where you're financially stable as one thing, or just happy or comfortable, even if that means, you know, you're, 
financially stable in another way, like you still live at home and you don't have to worry about moving out or something like that, which is perfectly fine. As long as you're always moving towards like some goal. But um, for me, I want to continue to be freelance and just, you know, I've been offered full-time jobs more than one um, in LA and I've just turned them down. I want to continue to do content, continue to do casting. And you know, the funny part is I don't even know what I want to do. Uh, like I know my goal with, with, with commentary is to end up at a major and my goal with YouTube, I don't know. I, I want to get to a hundred subs, a hundred thousand subs, but beyond that, I don't know, um, what I want to do with it. I don't want to make videos about counter-strike for the rest of my life. I just do right now. So I, I think. I think in, in that, and that's what, and that's what I would say is kind of immature about me is that I'm like out here pursuing something that I don't even see the end game for, and I don't necessarily get a lot of security out of it. And I could have taken a better option, but because I'm just going, just cause I just feel like I want to investigate my curiosities and sacrifice, um, security for that, I feel immature, but that's the way, that's the way I am. That's the way I want to do it. Um, so I should be finding out soon about my green card, but, um, even though I feel like I can kind of fly by the seat of my pants, uh, the anxiety is definitely kicked in and I definitely want to go on a little bit of a, a tangent here and I don't want to talk about this too much, but I've seen a lot about like my entire timeline on Twitter is people tweeting out like memes about anxiety and depression and stuff. And I, 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 I wonder how much people are actually trying to help themselves. Uh, or if they're just trying to make themselves feel better by like sharing what they feel, which I don't think that's necessarily malicious, but, uh, I've specifically been able to figure out, and I know some of it's hereditary, but I think it's the right word. And then in that circumstance, like I'm not saying that anybody can do anything about what they have, but, um, for me, I, my anxiety's kicked in for the second time maybe in my life, uh, yeah, maybe ever. Um, and a lot, and it's because of the, uh, green card thing where back in November, USPS lost a work permit that I had, which is a pretty important document and there's no easy way to get a new one. And that really made me anxious. And that was the first time. And so I didn't know why, because I never really get that. And it's come back now because I know the answer for my green card is happening soon. So like, I don't know where I'm living next month. You know, that's kind of crazy. I, especially for someone who's my age, like a lot of people are married by my age or have kids or something. And so, you know, I think it's nor totally normal for me to be a little bit anxious about something like that, but, um, I'm, I'm fine. Like, you know, I have enough money to, if I have to move, it's fine. I have a plan. If I move, um, I have the plan. If I stay, I know how I take advantage of everything here and do as much stuff as possible but it still causes me it's caused me anxiety just you know being in this time um but that's kind of that's kind of all i want to say about that to be honest um it's just just letting you guys know it's a waiting game for me right now and uh i don't know what the future holds so okay so the reason i brought that up actually was because i missed a lot of lands this year <laughs> Uh, I've got invited to lands all over the world and I couldn't go. And it's finally at the point where people have come into my chat on Twitch and they've said, have you completely given up on casting? And I, I am like, oh man, you know, that's now the image that's been created that because I haven't been able to go to lands that it seems like I'm turning down lands or I'm not getting invited to lands you know, or I'm just disinterested in CSGO or something like that. But in reality, I would have gone to so many more events this year if it wasn't for this, um, the green card process and how I have to stay in America. So, um, we've got a big land coming up in June and a couple of big, a lot of big opportunities this year, actually. 
And I told myself that I was not going to wait any longer for my green card if it meant pa going past this date of having to, of going to this one land. So I will be forfeiting the application if I don't get an answer, which I'm already, you know, way, way overdue. But unfortunately, because there's, it's, it's a lot of people applying for, um, applying for a green card, it's totally normal and something I understand. Um, it's just that, you know, it's, it's taken a lot longer than it, it should have ideally. Um, but I will be moving back to Canada if I don't get an answer. And it's because that's totally good. You know, like that's totally fine. I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to move back if I had to, um, miss my friends dearly. I really want to get started on casting and that leads me into first of two routes. So if I move, um, I'm going to start casting as much as possible. And I've been uploading these casual casts on YouTube to practice commentary, to practice a little bit more play by play and also put it out there and do it on Twitch so that people can help me with vocabulary and I can catch myself on stuff and just constantly stay a little bit warmed up because if you guys remember, um, scrawny, he's the, he's the guy I'm going to be co-casting with. Me and him are going to move forward with co-casting and we're going to take it very seriously and he's going to be the play by play and I'm going to be the color commentator and bring the analysis and we're going to duo at as many events as possible. And we, we love Counter-Strike and we are good friends and we play games together all the time. And we have just been waiting for the moment that we can finally get together and become a duo and cast. And so for anybody who's wondering, that's who my duo is going to be until further notice, which I hope is never. If Connor one day wakes up and says, I fucking hate launders, no, I'm canceling this duo, then it's over. But until that day, me and Connor are going to be a duo and we're going to take it very seriously. And I really want to add to uh, our, our commentary, um, our commentary scene, our amazing commentary scene. I just want to be a part of it, you know, me and Connor so much respect for the current commentators that exist in counter-strike and we just want to be a part of that group and and bring like great csgo commentary to audiences all over the internet and make this game more enjoyable for people to listen to and watch and um we're su we're super dedicated to this and uh, we've been talking about it for a long time we did dream Act atlanta and we did a couple weeks of ESL Pro League here in America, and, and yeah, we're really good friends. So you know, we're we're trying to do that, and that's that's what's going to be kicking off soon. So that's that should answer that question. Uh, if I get to stay here, we have plans because me Taylor and I both live here in LA, and we've been flying Nathan out. Nathan's the guy who edits a lot of the video, the best videos we have on the YouTube channel. And we flew him out uh, a couple weeks ago to help with the marketing and video stuff for our last boxer uh, merch release where we did. We had this shirt, we had the washed dad hat and the Karma Club bandana that I've been, the Crypt bandana that I've been waiting to put out for like seven years. And we've had him, we, we, we'd like to keep that going, but yeah, if, 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 you know, maybe one day, we could have like a like a studio in LA or something where we can go in, make videos, make clothing, have a, a store that people can come by and buy clothes out of, or just hang out, do podcasts from, you know, like do some really cool shit like that. Um, and that would be, I think, what I would work towards if I would, if I were able to stay right away, as well as continue to commentate, you know, and all the time and travel all the time. So those are kind of the two things, two options. Um, <clears throat> next up, 80,000 YouTube subs in four years. <laughs> That's the next video topic. <sighs> Man, I've only had 80,000 YouTube subs in four years. That's, that's really bad. No, yeah? that's really bad. People come into my stream all the time and my stream, my stream doesn't do well either, but I'm, I, I don't consider myself like a real streamer. My schedule is very erratic. Um, 
I, I don't think I have the skill set to be like a top streamer. I've never wanted to ever wanted to do that. Like I've never wanted to be a top streamer. So I don't hold that against myself, but on YouTube, I, I feel like I should have a big YouTube channel. I do, we do great videos and work hard on them. We think a lot about them. We do something that no one else does. You know, it's mostly just been about consistency and uploading. And that's why I've been trying to upload these casual casts because it's not as much work to edit them. And I think they're fun for people and people get to catch up on CSGO games. And it's right back to our roots because this is kind of why I started my channel was to upload a game a day like Purge did with Dota or Husky did with StarCraft. Those are the two biggest influences of my channel. So I think these casual casts are gonna be the answer to uh, padding the week-to-week -week uploads along with this podcast. And then also um, the really nice videos, but some of those are going to be white label. So we recently did a video on Cirque and that's on the ECS YouTube channel. Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of the really like high quality stuff because it's so much work to make those videos um, are going to be um, are going to be uploaded to other places, other channels and stuff. But eighty thousand YouTube subs is unacceptable. So first small goal is get that plastic YouTube play button, hundred thousand subs. <laughs> Just get it done with. All right, we need I need to get that done with. That has to happen. Like in the next few months, we have to do that. So I'm going to do my part, be consistent. You guys are going to tell everybody to subscribe in, to the channel, like all the videos and, and ding that bell and everything. And we're going to get to a hundred thousand and I won't just, I won't disappear at a hundred thousand. We'll keep going, keep going hard. We'll try to get rolling snowball and, you know, hit a million subs one day and, uh, we can do it. You know, it's not even like, how do we do it? I don't know how to do it. I have 80,000 subs. You know, it's not like going from one to 50,000 should be way harder than going from 50,000 to a hundred thousand. So there's just no excuse. And, um, I'm not going to apologize or anything. We're just going to get it going and start uploading consistently and, and, uh, put out great content and all the while I'll improve my commentary. You guys get content. We get to watch games and, um, cover the, oversaturated amount of CS that there is and games that happen late at night, you know, games you might not watch. We'll try to get those games on the channel so everyone can kind of watch them together and everything, and we'll continue to grow the community. But the title of this section of the video is more so about how everything I've done in the last four years, I'm still kind of middle of the pack and everything. Uh, and that's, that's awful. Like, and the YouTube channel was the first thing. So it's the most symbolic, like, YouTube channel, I, I should have four to 500,000 subs, if not a million. Um, my stream should average a thousand viewers, um, but I don't put in the effort in uh, on my streams. And I think, and you know, like we just started the clothing thing. We're taking that more seriously and we're still at a small size and we'd like that to grow. I would like to, you know, be a giant brand in, in esports and just clothing in general. And that's okay. Cause that's a lot newer. But I realized, you know, I know how to carry a stream of a thousand people. I can do it. It just takes a lot of energy on my part and it's going to feel more like work than anything else. But, you know, think really thinking hard about it. I don't need my whole life to be, well, you know, I, I'll, it's meant to be fun. I'm, I'm definitely going to still enjoy streaming, but. I think exerting myself a little bit more when I show up on my stream and putting in a little bit more energy and working hard to improve my life outside of the stream so that I have more natural energy and excitement and enthusiasm, um, I think will all will make me happier and make this stream happier as well. And we'll actually get to the point where I would like to, you know, no matter what game I play to have two to 400 viewers, I think that would be ideal. I don't want, I don't even really want more than that. It's like, I like a tight knit community on Twitch. The viewers I have like a tight knit community on Twitch. I like to read every line of chat when I read chat. And, uh, I just, I think the baseline though, needs to be higher. Cause like I've been playing a lot of Fortnite, and, um, I understand that <laughs> Fortnite's kind of a meme, you know, it's the biggest game right now. Everyone's playing it and making YouTube garbage myths is dating pokey YouTube videos 
about it and it's really gross like you got all the top all the top garbage youtubers just destroying the seo and getting you to watch their videos with their like clickbait on a new level and just it, it's just it's just awful like for everything about fortnite in terms of content creation um but whether the game is big or small i've always just done what i like to do you know when we ran a reflex tournament it was not the game's dead right now but it was still like a very small audience in the first place and we just wanted to do that um because we like the game melee it's not not the biggest game but we love melee so we got involved with zoo and the smash community you know um and fortnite's the biggest game right now but it's a game i really like a lot i love the building um it appeals to me as a game that has a high skill ceiling i think it's just straight up fun and has a high skill ceiling and i've always said that a game doesn't have to be hard a game well, it doesn't have to be hard to be good but uh, a game should be even if a game a game should have a high skill ceiling but it should also be fun at any level i think fortnite has that really amazing quality i think smash bros has that amazing quality and people stick around in counter-strike even though they suck because it's still fun um and that's kind of hard to find I mean, reflex might not have had that maybe that's why it's it's not doing too well um other games i don't know sometimes you can just get unlucky but regardless i really like fortnite right now having fun playing it it's made me want to stream a lot it's given me new goals in terms of grinding um i'm trying to learn as much as possible to not just be like a, a trash player like actually be good and uh <clears throat> It's killing my stream, man. It's like absolutely destroying my stream. We we have had I've gone down to like twelve viewers playing Fortnite, and I totally understand why because there are people there's people out there that have more personality in a in a broadcast than I do that are streaming Fortnite that are maybe worse than me. So people watch them, or there's tons of pro players that have great personalities or just good enough personalities that are playing that are just better than me. So like, why not watch them? So there's a lot of or, or there's you know people who from my stream don't play fortnite because they're counter-strike they don't like counter they don't like fortnite or other games and they're here for me to play counter-strike talk about counter-strike so they want to watch but this is the first game that's re like like really got my numbers to a point that's like alarmingly low because if it's between 40 and 100 viewers I'm, I'm chill like as long as it's not one dude in chat talking to himself laughing at his own jokes you know that's that's fine if there's like you know five to ten people talking that's great but this just made me realize like you know i maybe need to try harder to just improve the stream to grow the stream so that we hit a baseline that i'm comfortable with at all times and in the process i will um in the process i will probably enjoy doing that more and also i will get better at just being more entertaining which is like not something that comes naturally to me but it's something that is critical for my job and it's something that I am having a lot of fun learning how to do. I would say I'm a much more open, interesting, enthusiastic person than I was three years ago um, in my old YouTube videos. And I think I had a lot of the, the skills laying dormant somewhere inside me for a long time, but never really unlocked them. And I think I've been exploring that and it's starting to come out and I, I'm, I'm having fun with that. So even though it's not who I would say I naturally am, I think I am, I am up for the task and uh, I am curious about where it's going to bring me and I'm super motivated to become a good commentator. So all of the skills I think are going to be really important. Um, you know, being interesting and loud and stuff for eight hours a day is incredibly difficult. Um, but uh, I think it's also about exercising, exercising that. Like if you if you do it every day then it should only get easier so i'm gonna try to work towards that while getting good at a game that i really enjoy even though people aren't really enjoying watching me play that game or some days are, are better than others but yeah those are some of the some of the goals some of the red flags that have been raised by the fact that i've been kind of middle of the pack and all these different things i've tried and the other thing is being a tier two caster you know um a lot of that is I could have had a big year we never know already but that I know that like I've been specifically hamstrung hamstrung in being able to cast in the last year so I can I can change that a lot in the coming months I'm looking forward to seeing how far I can get with it and I'm really 
you know, feel like I can improve quickly at this point. Um, working at ECS has has helped a lot. Uh, working with James and Dan and talking to them individually and getting criticisms from them. And um, especially James who just will tell me like flat out things I need to improve. Uh, it was actually a, yesterday or something. It was just like one cast was like, I tried different things every time I cast and I like it was like first game of the day and I was very focused and I was looking at the game and I was talking but at the end of the game he's like that that energy is unacceptable like you can never bring that to a broadcast it's got to be more energy than that and I didn't realize like I just didn't realize that I think to the outside it seemed like I was disinterested but for me I was interested but I think that my voice if I if I don't speak very loudly or think hard about my inflection or yeah, if I don't just like really bring it consciously, then I can sound extremely tired because I have a deep voice. It gets real raspy. It's also early in the morning, but um, it still made me realize that for me to do a good job, I learned that like, because he just told me bluntly, like I need to have more energy. Um, more energy than I would have if I was talking to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. And um, I thought it was great. Like, that's like a huge reason why I'm talking about a lot of the stuff in the video right now. Um, and I definitely wasn't, it wasn't like I was like that all season. In fact, it was, I consciously try to do different things every time because we were learning to have, I was learning to have chemistry with James and Dan, knowing when to talk, knowing what, what jokes worked uh when when jokes worked and uh what kind of appeal to them and what they how how i could talk to them in a way that they could you know add on to it and basically how to get that broadcast to work in a very like um unnatural setting where it was like it's like three it's like three guys talking but you know even though james is just talking that it's like a chill cast he still like secretly brings the energy like you can hear it and i think that's what i needed to try to it's kind of like impedance with if you guys understand anything about audio where if you have high impedance headphones like my hd 600s or even these like dt 990 pros it's the one way i've heard it explained is like if you have if you have headphones that require a lot of power to run then it's kind of like trying to push a giant rock slightly. So it's like I'm trying to bring out the power and energy in my voice with a lot of control, but I'm not trying to speak really quickly or yell. And that's the that was a challenge for me on ECS was to try to find that um, that balance. And I'm totally confident on LAN. Like we when we when I did Dalit or when I did um, Denver with Blue, I felt like that was the the best and most accurate to how good I think I can be um, in a land environment, but that's been a long—it's been a long time since then. So I just need to bring that back. But it was good to—it was still good to to hear that there is no way for me to speak in a conversational tone and be appropriate for an audience. Because I would, I would watch my, and he said something that. It almost felt a bit patronizing when he, it, uh, James said, like, um, you know, this is why it's good to do these eight hour days because you can get better at controlling your voice and being like on point for eight hours long. And the only reason I felt patronizing was because I've I've done like like the first land I did um, was like, you know, I did it for free 14 hour days, didn't shower for three days, like. I've done 14 hour a day casts online. I've really done that already. And, but I, but I think what that said to me, most importantly, you know, was that I was trying something that I should have learned because of that, I should have learned already that that will not work. You know, I should have learned that, that having this conversational tone and this like slightly low energy is just a bad idea, no matter what. And, um, and so, you know, him saying this, I guess, just because he doesn't really, like, didn't know that I have kind of run the gauntlet in that sense. 
but that's because it seems like I haven't learned as much as I should have to him naturally because I'm doing something that's maybe that's maybe should have been more obvious to me you know where's the energy I should be I should have been bringing it more and so I uh, I'm just really glad sometimes all you have to do even though I've gone from one day bringing the energy one day not now I know that 100% of the time I just need to not do it this way you know I'm not I, I, it's just now it's just clear it's just nice sometimes to um, get told something bluntly it's important I think and uh, even if it's something you're already thinking about you know sometimes you, you think about something and you think it's true but it takes getting called out on it to have it really cemented in your mind and now uh, honestly just like realize like this this um, will help me forever so um, I'm really like, super looking forward to more lands um, more commentary in general and continuing to move in the right direction and that wasn't no the only thing every um, a lot of times I'd get feedback on what to improve I've talked to you uh, talked to Dan about commentary he kind of told me the same thing and uh, I talked to James about other stuff which was like you know about your voice and how to bring that up how to be more boisterous and he talked about you know it's like WWE or I don't know if that's the wrestling I don't watch a lot of wrestling but there's so there's a wrestling commentator he really likes he talked about how he would sit to really bring out the the bigness in his voice and how he relates to WWE commentators a lot and how um, Dan feels like you know it's been a real real journey learning how to become a commentator and being able to learn from a1 commentators like that is um, just extremely valuable and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have got uh, to have uh, done ECS and just hung out with them because they're extremely cool and um, all those all the guys at ECS in fact were a great time so <clears throat> I don't know how long we're running here but I think I think that's it I think I'm gonna call it um, no sponsors just store.boxer.gg we have restocked uh, the invert or the negative and the classic we still have some items left over from last month we are not we are skipping this month's release to plan out a much bigger and much more detailed release next time and we're slowly moving towards getting to the point of having a very official and structured cycle of clothes coming out and what they'll look like and what the direction is and I want to really give some time to lament on the last release and figure out what I want to do and what we should do to make the best and coolest stuff possible so until then you can buy what's on the store now and um, thank you guys for listening I hope you enjoyed this and feel free to leave commentary did I use a word too often in this in this uh, in this um, podcast did I have any hitch words I noticed I was saying and a lot uh, to to glue two sentences together or two thoughts together did I do that too often let me know everything I want to use those and fix them and improve for the next one and become a great personality you know because whatever you do in life you should try to do it well no matter what it is chore hobby or job all right thanks so much take care everybody